Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today is going to be about making adjustments. When things don't go perfectly to plan, which happens all the time in farming, um, what do you do? And I'm going to show you my bees and my mushrooms today and a couple things that we are doing to try to get them to be successful. And this is the key to becoming a good farmer, is never giving up. You just keep adapting over and over and over again, uh, figuring out what works in your context, in your ecosystem. Before we go see the bees, if you guys really enjoy my content, would you mind signing up for my weekly newsletter? That's some place I'm creating exclusive content just for you guys, and I'm trying to put a ton of value in there, things that are gonna teach you and educate you and be valuable, not just some, you know, run of the meal email just to bother you. And I'm gonna start tying in my videos with the email to maybe elaborate more on certain things or give some more context or tell a story or do things like that. So check it out down in the description. Would love to see you guys reply to me in email. So I'm back about 12 days after me and Andrew set the bees up here. And what I noticed the last couple days is that there's some activity going on in that box. So either I've got a swarm that just came in, there's also the bee ball that's still in that dogwood tree. Um, I thought they would have been gone by now, but I checked and they're still there. So what I'm gonna do is see what's going on. Is this another swarm? I'm gonna figure that out by looking at the frames, see if there's any brood that's being laid. Um, and see just kind of what's going on in there. If I don't find a queen, I'm gonna go up there, assume that there is a queen in that ball uh, and try to capture that and put that inside of this box and see what happens once again. Wax moth larva, I'm guessing. So I don't see much going on in those frames. This one looks like they drew on. They did draw on this. There's some other bugs in there now. So other bugs are trying to get in here and take over too. Just gonna remove a couple of these frames so that when I bring those bees over here, I can just dump them in. So my theory is part of this hive is protecting the queen. The other part is going in, taking that honey out of that hive just to keep these guys alive. And that's what they've been surviving on. But they're gonna run out soon. So I'm gonna try to knock them into this bucket. Okay guys, I captured them really well. So now, and they might have the queen because they really changed some of their sound when I got here. Okay, hopefully I threw her in. I've got a, some sugar syrup here, one to one. And I'm gonna get another box to put on top and then we'll seal it up. So now only the bees can access it. If I leave that out, sitting out, then other creatures could get it. And hopefully now just the bees will get it. So now let's see what happens. Whew, okay. So that went pretty well, as well as it could have. There's just barely any bees. Maybe I should have set it up with just one box at the bottom with a few of those drawn out frames and some honey. I remember reading a long time ago that you wanna have it um, kind of be to the same size as, as what they could you know, manage at least. So this is still a really low probability chance that this is going to work. Uh, but hey, why not spend 20 minutes and see if something's gonna happen. So now let's go over to my mushrooms. I wanna show you guys that because this year we have not had any mushroom flushes yet. And that's because we've had a very dry summer here in the South. Um, very little rain. It's been humid, but um, we've basically been in a drought for the last month. So I'm gonna have to soak the logs. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. And we're gonna force the mushrooms to fruit. And this is what's done in a commercial setting so that they can rely on consistent production. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill up my uh, tote of water here and grab my shiitake logs. Here's another problem that I'm figuring out. My logs are a bit too long for this guy. And I don't have a bigger tote than this. So this is another lesson to learn here that until you really do it and have experience, you don't know what all that you need and what's going on. So I hope that this saves you guys some time in the future if you do want to soak your logs. And I think that that is kind of necessary in a drought sort of scenario, or if you're growing logs in a place that does have a drought through the summer or 
uh, the time when you're typically wanting that fruiting to happen, but there's not a lot of rain or humidity, you're gonna have to soak your logs to force the fruiting. I was hoping that I would be able to just get away with just the rain and the humidity here in Tennessee, but obviously not. So now I just have to figure out the efficient ways to soak the logs. So next season, I will focus on making my logs a little bit shorter. So I think what I'll get is there's some really long stainless steel tanks. I'm gonna grab one of those, I think from Tractor Supply or the co Farmer's Co-op. So this should help you determine the size that you want your logs. Think about the soaking tank that you're gonna use. So now these logs will soak for 24 hours and I will pull them out and set them back up and then we'll see if they fruit and I'll do another update video on these for you guys. These are all the logs that I inoculated this year. If you missed that video, you can check it out here. Uh, and this is all inoculated from field and forest mushrooms. So something else I think I'm gonna do right now, uh, because it's so dry, is I'm gonna just wet down all these logs by hand with my hose. Um, and you know, one thing you do have to be careful of and we'll see what happens, is not letting your logs completely dry out uh, because the mycelium would die in there. So hopefully that has not happened after this drought. I was seeing a lot of mycelium growing on the outside of these logs, but now I'm not really seeing that. I see some here, but it looks like it's drying out. So the mycelium is going deeper into the log um, where more moisture is. So let's give it some more moisture here and pray for rain and hopefully we get that soon. According to what happened two years ago when I inoculated these logs, at the end of the summer, like August, September, I did get a fruiting of shiitake and oyster mushroom as well. But I'm not expecting that to happen this year because the growth was super slowed down by there not being enough moisture in the logs. So we will see what happens with this year's inoculation. So the reason I've been able to learn so many different skills around farming and homesteading all those things is because I just go for it and try. And as you see, look at how many different failures I've had. But the failures give me a bunch of different answers to different variables in the equation of figuring out how to do this properly. So today I, I figured out a few more things about soaking the logs and even the log size because when you're just starting out, um, you know, you're just going based upon recommendations, but you always want to fit it into a system and the system that works well for whatever your context you're doing that certain farming task. So now I know I was leaning towards doing them longer, like 40 inches or even a little bit more thinking, oh, it's like gonna be less work for me uh, to stack these up and you know I get more real estate or square footage of mushroom per log. But if I need to soak them, now they're gonna be heavier. Now I need a longer tote. So um, there's just so many variables when you're learning something new that you can't foresee until you've done it. Maybe you're watching someone's video like me and you're able to say, oh, whoa, cool, now I know and I don't have to make that mistake myself. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to share this process with you to show you guys that everything that I've learned either was self-taught or I learned from someone else, but much of what I've learned is, has been self-taught and I just wanna encourage you guys that you can learn or teach yourself how to do just about anything because of access to information on the internet. And um, it's just an amazing time uh, to be alive and to be doing homesteading and farming because uh, there's a lot of innovation, a lot of things going on in the industry and um, really exciting to see so many more people getting into this lifestyle and, and wanting to do this for themselves. So um, I'm sharing failures and successes and I want to show more about you know, how do I get to this final thing of now I know how to beekeeper, now I know how to do these mushrooms. I'm trying to walk you through how I develop my systems. I'm really striving to teach you how to think about farming or a way to think about farming rather than instructions on farming itself. A lot of times though, guys, it, it's uh, smart to just copy someone else's system like Greg Judy. A lot of what I do with my sheep, it's coming from Greg Judy's mind. So. I take that and then I adapt it again to what I'm doing or what I have available to me, the tools and all that sort of stuff as well. So I uh, hope this helps to give you guys another way to think about farming and um, also encouragement that failing is okay and it's part of the process to get you better 
at all of these different skills. So if you guys like all this info, some of this more advanced uh, stuff when it comes to farming, these are things that like are not possible to kind of learn about in a book or um, even a lot of YouTube channels. I'm trying to show you learning through experience and what that kind of looks like and hopefully I'll give you some um, more encouragement and courage to do it yourself. And um, I've just noticed the more things that I teach myself, the less anxiety or the less um, trepidation I have about attempting that new thing. Uh, I already know I'm gonna fail. I already know there's gonna be mistakes and that's fine. I have to do that to get better at it. So hope this was great for you guys and sign up for my email list if you like more uh, philosophical, more advanced topics like this and I love to share this with you guys. So have a great day on your farm or your garden and I'll see you in the next Nature's Always Right video.